Throw myself on. Welcome to Forged at the Table. My name is Charles, and I am not your dungeon master tonight. How's that for a change for once? I am going to be turning over the reins of DMing for this Forged one shot to Stump of Matic. They can hear me, but they can't talk to you because I have them on mute. Maybe, just maybe, if you guys donate enough money, I'll take the mute button. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> anyways, welcome to a Forge One Shot. A very special night here on the channel as Stumpomatic becomes the very first guest DM over here. He's also going to be on the 19th kicking off a Curse of Strahd campaign that he's going to be running also here on the channel. That will be every Thursday night, I believe, at 9 p.m. I don't know. I don't have the schedule in front of me. Um, so let's get some a few things out of the way. All the, the, the viewer slots for all the upcoming campaign stuff and all that have been filled. Um, I have no more, and there aren't going to be any more for a little while. But we do have some more DMs coming down the pipe. Um, stump matic said that after he gets comfortable with the Curse of Strahd campaign, he's looking to possibly launch another one. Um, one of those spots is already gone because he said the word pirates. I get excited, and so I'm going to be jumping in on that. I am going to be playing a swashbuckling, peg-legged goblin warlock in that game. Stump now knows that. So... So I hope everybody out there is doing fantastic. We have a couple giveaways tonight to kind of celebrate the, the, the specialness of this whole thing. We are going to be giving away two different giveaways. Remember, giveaways are open to only followers and above. Hey, Scraticus. Hey, welcome aboard, my friend. Welcome to our unique and, yes, sometimes dysfunctional family. I am very familiar with that name. Welcome aboard. But, yes, we are giving away two different bundles you could say tonight um hey quest for 1 million thank you for that prime subscription my friend welcome 
Welcome to the Forge. Yes, for all you other people out there, look up above you. You have a subscription button. This takes two seconds. Click on that subscription button because you might have a Twitch Prime subscription that you didn't even know about. You don't have to use it on our channel. You can use it on any channel you want. Cool thing is it costs you nothing. It does not auto renew. So every month you can give it to a new streamer. That's what I do. So the two giveaways tonight at the one hour mark, we are taking a break. Um, during that break, I am going to be giving away this right here, the super cool bar. It's the Rusty Dragon bar set. These are unpainted, but pre-prime with Vallejo minis. That is the first giveaway tonight. That'll be at the one hour mark to celebrate. stump -a coming on board. The other giveaway is a selection of eight different miniatures. Um, they are the children's set. This is in honor of that murderous turtle, Bubbles. Speaking of Bubbles, next week on April 4th at 9 p.m. Eastern on this very channel, you're going to be able to tune in to the first Session Zero for a brand new bi-weekly campaign called The Adventures of Bubbles. We're going to find out how Bubbles got into that murderous state of mind. It also includes a displacer beast, a wooden table and stools. I'm going to get through this quick. A phase spider, throwing that in there for Matt Mercer and those guys from a couple weeks ago. We have a cart, a two wheel cart. We have some pillars. And the last two, which I think are kind of the piece of the resistance to this bundle, we have a pair of Mimics. And last, but definitely not least, we have the Silver Dragon. I was going to try and give away a Beholder, but holy crap, on the secondary market, those things were going, are going for as high as 100 bucks right now. Because they didn't print enough. Jerks. So that's that. The first giveaway will happen at the hour mark. The second giveaway will happen at the end of the stream. So stick around for those. I'm going to give away the magic word for the first giveaway. Only enter this one time, folks. You have one hour to enter it, but only do it once because Nightbot doesn't like people who get greedy. Jens, Firehawk. Um... <laughs> The, the the first magic word for tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is right there. Type the word stump in one time tonight in the first hour, and you will be automatically entered to win this the Rusty Dragon pre-paint or pre-primed unpainted bar set. Really cool set. I actually own it myself. Um, you'll be able to open open that up and 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 play with that. So. Without further ado, I'm sure you guys are, are kind of probably tired of looking at my fat head and my face and all that other good stuff. So let's go ahead and get rid of me. Let me see if I can find me. There we are. So I go bye-bye. And I am going to turn on their microphones. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to stump -O -Matic. He's going to tell you a little bit about what the hell's going on, a little bit about himself that sort of thing and then we're gonna go around the horn he's gonna let each one of the players tell him a little bit about themselves and a little bit about their characters and it's all his for the next hour so ladies and gentlemen thanks for coming to forge at the table thanks for hanging out with us we love you we enjoy having you here go ahead throw questions and stuff in, in the chat all that sort of thing but for now stump welcome aboard it's your show now peace Hey everyone, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm a little nervous, but we're gonna do this and it's gonna be fun. And how about them giveaways? And my name is in chat. Everybody's just so happy to see me. Uh, simple one shot tonight. Get me warmed up with streaming, DMing on stream. I'm looking forward, really looking forward to uh, Strahd. Running Strahd, the players, we're starting to talk and I'm excited about the players we'll have. So, but tonight is gonna be fun. I will hand it over. We'll go down the line on the top of the page. So right to the right of me is Syntec. 
Um, all right, um, I'm synetic. Uh, I'll be <laughs> no, it's all right. Uh, I'll be playing Drill Mewshank, the uh, half orc ranger. Uh, I'm pretty new to D and D, so I hope you guys will understand if I I'm not the the best, make the best decisions. But um, definitely have some fun tonight. Hey everybody, I'm Atavistic. I'll be playing Subs, the Halfling Rogue Fighter. The charming Subs, Halfling Rogue Fighter. Uh, recently found Forge at the Table. Super excited to be playing on the channel. I'm looking forward to watching Stumps do his thing. Okay, hi guys, I'm Jersh, and I'll be playing <clears throat> Duke the Rogar, the Dwarven Barbarian. Um... I streamed one time before and it turned out terribly. Let's hope it goes better this time. <laughs> okay, well, I am just to set the page, set the set the picture. I tend to be in real life a very easy DM. I do not kill a lot of my players, so it'll probably work out better for you this time. <laughs> um, so we're gonna start. Our players have all arrived, whether together or individually, at small a small town, small small city, Amberwell. Um, they they all happen to go to the same inn. They're sitting there. They are enjoying a drink, eating a meal. Um, happen to all be the inn is full, so they found space at the same table guys uh, let us know what you look like what your take it from there <laughs> so who should go first <laughs> Synetic, why don't you all right um i'm uh quite a large fellow there <laughs> I imagine I have grayish skin, larger figure. Um, not the average ranger, I guess. Uh, I use mostly melee. So you see probably a, a big, big flail um, strapped to my side. And um, probably looking a little bit angry. And what do we see when we look at Subs? Subs is sitting there. He's got a nice little tankard in his hand for his halfling size. He's got uh, two swords on his belt and a cloak tightly wrapped around him, uh, wearing very basic leather armor. Nothing too special about it. Big old smile on his face and uh, has pulled out a small set of dice. And there he is. And uh, when people look at Duke, they will see a towering dwarf. Uh, he is bare chested, which is kind of unusual. So he got this thick, like, he, he seems unarmored, but he has this thick red hair that acts as armor. Um, he carries around a gigantic, uh, just about as tall as he is. Um, and that's pretty much all he has on him. Just some basic gauntlets, boots, loincloth type critter thing, and the sword. Okay, so the three of you are sitting there enjoying your meal, and you notice into the inn comes a young man, older boy, and he talks to the bartender for a few minutes, and the bartender points at your table. And this man comes over, and out of breath, he's been running, and he says, my lady, my lady sent me to find some adventurers, hoping they could help her. Um, when you have time yet this evening, would you be willing to come down and speak to her? Subs pipes up, you know, a little attentive at the mention of a lady. Wow, well, is she single? Well, yes, I believe she is. <laughs> Always happy to help a lovely lady. Okay, okay, um, 
just come down to the Rich Rock Mining Company and ask for Givelin Giant back. I will let the guards know that the three of you are coming. He looks at all three of you, hopefully. What's in it for us? She she has a job offer, I believe. She really didn't. She just said to come down and look for some adventurers who are looking for work. If it involves killing anything, oh, I'm in. Slams down his mind. I assume it pays well? Um, she, she's a very, she's a very good mistress to work for. Um, I've never heard anybody who works for Rich Rock Mining Company complain of pay, so I would assume it will pay well, yes. Well, with a name like Rich Rock, I will definitely be there. <laughs> okay, he bows, you know, he bows his head a couple times and he takes takes off running. Lucky little fellow, ain't he? <laughs> oh, more than you know. <laughs> Kinda gives his weird glance to the halfling. He's about the same height as him. Okay. Well, shall we go then? Yes. I do believe I am finished here. As long as there's money. Uh, Drell? Yeah, as long as there's money, I'm in. So a short time later, you make your way down. Rich Rock Mining Company's offices are... You approach the gates, there's a small compound and you see as you approach the gates, the guard steps out and asks your business. I assume you say that you were sent for Gillen Giant back. I kind of nudge subs. Oi, tell the man. Ah, yes, my good fellows, we were called upon by a, a mere worker to reach out to Miss Giantback. He says, ah, good, you are the adventurers. And he looks you over with a knowing eye. The, the guard appears to be well-seasoned. but And he nods his head in agreement or in approval. He says, okay, you go in and you'll go past this warehouse to the left and on the other side of it, you'll see a small stone office building. Go in there. Excellent, my good man. Give a over-the-top flourish and a bow and then make my way past. Dude's just going to stroll past some balls. As you make your way into the office building, as you enter the office building, waiting in the interior in the entry chamber front office, you see a female dwarf with flaming red hair. Um, she has ornamental armor that look, looks to be, even though it is ornamental, it looks like it would still be fairly, you know, it would be effective. Um, and as you enter, she says, Ah, oh, you must be the the adventurers that young Willie was telling me of. I am Givelin. Many just call me Giant Back. Subs will step forward. Lady Giant Back, and with a large flourish, and he bends down, almost his head touching the ground. We are at your disposal. She or at least... I am. I'll give her a nice big wink. She blushes a little at this and says, well, none of that, none of that. Let's let's go into this conference room and I'll tell you what we got. She leads you into another room. There's ale set out. She says, you know, 
Duke immediately darts for the ale without even having an item. He just goes straight for it. And there's like bread and cheese and sit at the table and she sits down and she says, first, I already hired one group of adventurers. Um, I did not think this was that big of a deal. So I gave a starting group of adventurers the chance at this. And I'm afraid that I may have made a mistake in doing so. So please tell me a bit about yourselves. What? Tell me of your past, a couple of your past accomplishments. I want to, I do not want to send more to possibly their death. Subs perks up gladly. And he goes into this lavish tale of how he had sailed across the open seas, fought for beautiful princesses, and eventually has come to this humble, humble area to not only to find his fortune, but to perhaps find his true love. And, and that's that's his hope. Oh, give me a persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> oh, good thing I'm a halfling. I get lucky. That was a natural one. Uh, 17. She, again, blushes a little bit, but nods. So, you know, that sounds impressive. And looks at one of the other two. Well, she looks at the dwarf. From the time I was a boy, I've been slaying. Listen, all I need to know is how much coin are you going to give me? And I'll get the job done. She nods. Looks at the dwarf and his magnificent chest of hair. He has like he has like half a wedge of cheese just stuck in his mouth. I go like this. <clears throat> kind of like brushes like the crumbles out of his chest beard. Uh, I kill things. A lot of things. That's what I do. I like him. <laughs> okay. He says. All right, then let me tell you about the job. Three months ago, about three months ago, a wagon supplying fruit to escrow left and they never returned. It was carrying basic food goods and standard household items when it left. I really, I sent two guards with it because it was gonna carry some copper back from the mine. But again, it, it's copper, so I felt Two guards should be enough. When it didn't return, I felt a little, you know, I, I was concerned. So I sent one of my guard captains, Captain Theron, to investigate. He hasn't returned. So about a month ago, I hired this group of adventurers. I figured, you know, maybe some goblins or bandits had moved into the area give a new group of adventurers a shot at glory. So I hired them to go investigate, see what had happened. And I fear I set them, sent them into a situation they may not been, they may not have been ready to handle. The last time I've heard from S. Grove was I received a, you know, I received a communication from Jabal, my mine foreman up there, and it was just a standard communication. He didn't mention any trouble. It was just mining processes and progresses. You know, he didn't mention any problems. So I don't know for sure there's a problem. The three disappearances could all be unrelated, but I don't think so. So what I propose is to just ride up to Esgrove. It's about, it takes about five days, three days along the main highway. And then after three days, you'll turn north, or no, you'll turn east and head into the mountains. And it's two, two days up a mountain path trail to get to Esgrove. If you get there and everything's fine and I'm just being a worried old woman, you will get 30 gold pieces a piece just for taking a ride. If 
you get there and you find some sort of trouble that you believe you are capable of taking care of, I will pay you each. We'll say 350 gold pieces for on top of the 30 already paid. 350 gold pieces for the hazard pay and for taking care of whatever problems there are. If you get there and reconnoiter the the situation and decide that, you know, it's a red dragon that's flown in and taken over the mine, then, you know, and it's something that you just really aren't equipped to handle, come back, we will gather whatever means we need to, to take care of it. And I would offer 50 gold to just lead, lead the army back to make sure, you know, cause you'll have been there already. How does that sound? Sounds like a milk run. I'm in. But I don't run away from nothing. <laughs> this sounds just like something up my repertoire. Well, and hopefully I am just being a worried old lady and it's, it's Esgrove holds a special place in my heart. It was the first mine after I left home. It's the first mine I opened. So, yes, it's just a copper mine and you know, it's not in my holdings. It's not the most profitable mine, but it's my first mine. So if you are all three agreeable, she will give you each a pouch with 30 gold. And she says, I appreciate it. Uh, is there any, any supplies you feel you need? Before you leave, I assume you'll leave in the morning. Well, I do know that some horses or ponies or whatever we may ride may be uh, beneficial for our trip. Yes, I will. You can either, I will send a note right now to the stable here on the compound and let them know you may pick from any of the horses that we have in stock that we have in our corral um either tonight before you go back to the inn or you can come tomorrow morning and get it wonderful so she's talking she scribbles a note rings a bell the boy willie comes running in here take this stable master yes him, yes him. And he goes running out he looks at all the food and mead left on the table and goes tomorrow definitely tomorrow <laughs> She will nod, and then she says, well, I have business taking me. Please feel free to stay and finish the mead and cheese, and she nods at you and will head out the door. Duke's already busy stuffing his face again. Subs will pour a small glass of mead and uh, find a chair and just kind of sit himself in and relax. <clears throat> Gerald just kicks up his feet. Okay, does anybody have anything else they wish to do overnight? Um, I would like to check out the warehouse just to kind of see if it is just like a copper mine here at the, uh, the Rich Rock or if, if it's a specialty kind of a mine. Um, so the warehouses have the warehouse, if you stick your head in the warehouse, you'll see that it's full of general goods and, um, I call it household items. And one of the teamsters will say, yeah, that's like. You know, most of our mines, we start a small town, you know, a village around it. And like we have a, a general store, a mine general store that people can 
purchase. So if you're looking for the ore, that's all saved points across the compound where there's a well guarded stone uh, almost like fort. Gotcha. Yeah, seeing the warehouse, kind of typical area. Subzola return back to the party and just kind of spend the rest of the night doing whatever. Okay. So the next morning you take off. Anybody want to do anything in the morning before you leave? And they say the directions are easy. You follow the road north. It should take you three days to get to the village of Weefield. I'm sorry, two days to get to the village of Weefield. From there, you will take turn east and head up this mountain pass. And the, at the end of the mountain pass is Esgrove. Um, so the first day, the trip goes uneventfully. The main road is well, tra- well traveled and well maintained. Um, you pass regular patrols of the local duke who keeps the, keeps the road path, uh, watches over the road. Uh, towards evening, you come up, you come upon where an area that caravans and travelers stay. It's a big open plain or, you know, a big open field. There's lots of signs of previous campfires and there's one caravan that's circled in a corner and you hear music playing from them as they and sounds of camp being set up. There's a couple other individual travelers that are making camp around the field. What's your guys' plans for the evening, for the night? I plan to go scout out this party and see if there's an actual party to be had. So yeah, it's a parade caravan, but as they get set up, there's a guy who's a peg leg older man who's sitting on one of the wagons playing a loop and a couple of young boys sitting beside him, one playing drums, one playing a tambourine, and they're playing music to help everybody, you know, to give them background encouragement to finish their evening tasks, setting up camp. It's, there's six wagons in the caravan total. So several guards, drivers. Are they like uh, setting up actual tents or what are they doing? Is there any heavy manual labor that they're having trouble? Um, they are setting up tents. Uh, they look very well practiced at setting up camp and you could there's a couple younger boys are carrying or not younger men carrying firewood from out of the forest one of them's struggling to drag a big a big log just gonna go over and help him oh thank you thank you sir thank you so much kind of dwarf just lifts it up It doesn't take long and they have campfire going and they're starting to, you know, they're creating a stew, starting to bubble over the fire. And some of the the guards start dancing and it's, they're, they appear well relaxed and you guys are invited to join them for the evening, for the night. Why camp by yourselves? I mean, not that it's very dangerous along the main road, but, you know, might as well just 
join with us if you want for the night and we'll all be safer for it. Subs gets a big grin across his face. We thank you for your hospitality. I would love to join such a jovial band of misfits. So, uh, unless any of you guys want to do anything, the evening oh. passes. Oh, nice. Yeah, he looks. Yeah, go ahead. He looks back at Drove like these puppy dog eyes, as his like stomach grumbles next to the stew. Like, like, can we? Can we please? Oh yes, please. Sorry, where are my manners? There's more than enough. Want to ask where they're headed? Um. They are heading south to, I don't know enough of the realm here to, but they're, they're heading south to the cities of the south. Run it. Our next stop will be in Amberwell. Interesting. Are there any uh, children around at the camp? Yeah, there's a couple of children. Great. I'll, I'll call the children over. Would you like to see a magic trick? Oh, magic, yeah! Are you I'll, a powerful uh, wizard? Not quite. And so I'll unsheath my singing sword, or my uh, dancing short sword, uh, speak the magic word and throw it into the air, and have it do flips and tricks and stuff, and then have it land back into my scabbard. So when you first pull it out, they all kind of... <gasps> and then it dances, and they're just like... We want all oh, that is so cool. Do it again, do it again. Duke's sitting there the same line. Do it again, do it again, do it again. <laughs> Subs, happy that I have an audience, pulls out his singing sword again, throws it up as high as he can, and instead of saying the magic word, just before it lands, about two inches or so from his face, he'll say the magic word so that it looks as if it would just about pierce his brow. Oh <gasps> They gasp with, and you hear a young lady behind the kids who are watching go, oh! Then I'll send it back up, let it do a couple more flips, and then sheath it. And everybody cheers and claps. And an enjoyable evening is had by all. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, Duke volunteers to take the first watch of the night with the caravan. Okay. They appreciate it, and there's one of the caravan guards is going to stand watch as well. Just because, you know. So the night passes uneventfully. The next morning, guys they quickly again just as well rehearsed pack up camp um the caravan leader approaches and says you know if you're looking to join his guards for caravan it may be a little below your pay scale but you never know Uh, just ask for old nord password any of his caravans you'll be welcome Right, friend? Definitely. Shortly after, they are heading south towards Amberwell. All right. Subs will turn to the crew, and uh, shall we continue north? Let's ramble on. Let's turn this up. (laughs) Again, the day riding on the main road past fellow travelers, some heading south, you riding on horses, you pass a couple wagons and people walking, heading north. Uh, towards the end of the evening, you see the small... Yeah, we feel up ahead. Um, the approach, it is a small farming village. There's one inn in the center of town. 
And you see behind the village, it's north and south pretty much is the main road. And to the east, you see a faint trail heading up into the mountains. About what time of day is it right now? Uh, it's 5.36 in the afternoon, probably, well, as you're on the, eight, yeah, you're, you have two hours of sunlight left, maybe. I'll uh, turn to the group, say, I'm more than happy to stay here for the night, or we can continue forward. I will leave that decision up to you two. I prefer a nice glass of ale to out on the road camping. What about you, Drell? I think it'd be beneficial if we stop by the end. Maybe uh, the other party has been through here. Good idea. Duke takes the lead and just starts marching off, leading his horse. <laughs> Okay, you enter the inn and you see inn slash tavern and you see most of the patrons are crowded around the corner of the bar where there is a older looking man who's telling a story and the crowd is completely engrossed. Let's go over there. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'd love to hear a story right now. So, as you approach, you hear him. So there I was, creeping through the woods, and the deer was 30 yards away, clean shot, and suddenly it just took off. And I know, I know that I hadn't made any noise. I know I didn't start it, so I, I hunkered down and waited, and not 10 seconds later, this huge, I mean, big nine foot tall nine foot wide creature guy just huge ogre comes walking through and he's la di da well there's you know it's been a while since we've had troubles with ogres and i wanted to know if there was more coming in so i, I let him go for a little bit and i started behind him and it didn't take me long and I see there's guts hanging in the trees and there was a somebody's lung just hanging there like gruesome Christmas decorations and crows crows just filled the trees and I look over the hill we come up on top of the hill and I look over and there's four ogres down there each one bigger than the last. And they're laughing and there's wagons overturned and ogres are just eating and they're laying there. And one of them has, I swear, he had a lady's brassiere and he made a sling out of it and he was practicing. He had a guy tied up and he was using it as a sling. He was throwing rocks about the size of a human's head and just smacking them into this. Well, by, he was a corpse just hanging in this tree, but all around him was just guts and just nasty stuff. Well, I just hightailed it out of there. Can, and, go ahead. Can Duke do an inside tech to see if he believes him? Go ahead. very high wisdom and that's a natural one he can... he's enthralled with the story can't believe it Brazier. wow it's you know i've had my times where i've wanted to get ladies out of it but you know i don't want them use for that that's just <laughs> dude just nods along with every single word he's saying And the others, villagers are just, ooh, and he's my, he, over the course of the evening, he retells the story. And every time he tells it, you know, it's four ogres, then it's six ogres, then it's 12 ogres, then it's, you know, 
it just keeps mounting. But the things that doesn't change in each retelling is they're big, bigger than average ogres, and this just gruesome scene of intestines and innards strung up in trees and pieces of flesh, torn flesh thrown up haphazardly in the tree and it like it just macabre Christmas decorations. Subs would like to pull the storyteller aside and uh, get a bit more information of where they're located, if they're on the same path that we're supposed to get about. Yes, I was up hunting in the mountains and it, it's when I trailed the ogre, it was, he went, and the, their camp is along the trail up to uh, S Grove. Sounds like that might be where our missing uh, parties may have gone. It's about two and a half days up the trail, about a half day this side of S Grove. Dude kind of spits off to the side and says, I I hate ogres so much. You guys have no idea. I say we kill them. We kill them all. Subs likes the idea. <laughs> okay, you, so you trail. I reckon they got some gold on them. And then I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'd like to hear. So, unless if anybody wants to do anything in the wee town of Weefield, next morning you wake up and you can head east into the mountains along the S Grove Trail. Yes. I think that's our next step. Well, yeah, let's go. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm ready. So, as you're moving along the trail, is there a particular mount marching order or riding order you're in? Do you take the horses with you into the mountains? Would we have inquired at the end what kind of terrain? It's, I mean, it's mountainous, but the trail is wagons can make it up. Then I think we probably would have taken the horses, yeah. Yeah. Um, do we want to let our ranger lead us? May be able to sense some things that I may not be able to pick up? Yeah, the dwarf will probably lag behind the most because he's not very comfortable with horses. He prefers a good ram, not a horse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it'll be Drell, then Subs, then Duke. in no real like tight military distances between you it's just kind of rambling along right yeah 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 we're not expecting trouble but we figure we'll be able to see it coming okay so the first day travel is nice quiet mountain Early fall day, you see some deer off in the distance. It's just a really peaceful day. You don't pass anybody. Evening sets. Do you want to camp for the night? Um, how how wide is the trail and kind of what's the, the scenario that we're looking at? Um, the trail is about 12 feet wide. It, it's fairly well used. Uh, you're kind of going up, well, you're going up a uh, you know, a, a natural little valley type I'm trying, I'm drawing a blank on the word here, you know, but it heads up into the mountains. Um, it's well forested. 
there's lots of if you go off the trail 25 30 feet there, there's lots of well where you could make a fairly well fortified camp subs will uh, relay the information to the group suggests that we camp off the trail a little bit of the ways and uh pro- possibly put up a watch make sure that we don't get ambushed by anything tonight sounds good it's <laughs> a good idea and uh subs offers to take first watch all right appears out of somewhere. <laughs> Voices in the forest whispering, Bubble. Okay. okay, the first watch passes uneventfully. Um, Duke, other than Duke snoring over there. On the and it gives him <laughs> turtle. <laughs> Who would like to take second watch? Uh, Sub's getting oh. sick of the snoring. He'll he'll kick uh, the dwarf. <laughs> what? It's your turn to watch. <sighs> All right. So I'll take my sword out and kind of set it on my knees. Okay. About an hour into your watch, give me a perception check. Right there. Woohoo. This is going to be amazing. That's going to be a 10. Okay. You hear about an hour into your shift. Down on the other side of the road, the path. So it's some ways away, but you hear something moving through the floor on the other side. And as you listen, you hear, I don't know why we come down. There's nothing to eat on the road all summer. And the other one said, then you hear a reply, shut up. It'll be there. Something's going to be there. There's always good food down here. Are they speaking common? Um, very good question. <laughs> They are speaking in a mix of giant and common. Okay, so I can understand half of it. Um, did can I gauge by the sound about how far? You're guessing at least 50, 60 feet away in the darkness. Um, and it sounds like they're moving south or they're moving they're moving along the path on the other side of the, on the other side of the path. Okay. So I'm gonna turn back to guys. I think they're here. Ooh. Our next victims. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just go home and get a deer. But I want dwarf. One oh. As soon as I hear that, uh, I speak the command word of my sword. Lime up, girl. And uh, light blazes off my sword. Well, not blazes, it's dim light for 10 feet. <gasps> what was that? Did my party wake up, by the way? <laughs> oh, so yeah. seeing the glowing light wipes his eyes, you know. Get out! <laughs> and immediately moves into a stealth. You 
here is like, come at me, you giant bastard. And crashing through the woods and across the path, coming out into the path, you all three see an Etten come stumbling out into the path. Where is he? Where is he? Look for the light, you idiot. So let's I, I immediately go into a rage as soon as I see him after that dwarf comment. Okay, let's roll in a shell. Okay, actually, not bad. You want to just post it in chat or tell you? Yeah, uh, just tell me. Okay, Duke's gonna have a 19 initiative. Uh. Drill got a three. <laughs> okay. Take your time. You're just waking up. Don't worry about it. I'm still a little sleepy. And, and how so about so they, uh, 16? Okay, Duke, you are first. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna use my bonus action to rage. Okay. Actually, hang on. How, how close are they? They are... within 30 feet. Okay, yeah. Definitely rage and going for the first one that I see. Okay. I have a movement of 35, so I can make it to Yep, you can make it there. They are... It's just the single one that you see at this point. Uh, you want a bit of dwarf? Here you go. <laughs> I'm gonna take a swing with my great sword. Yep. No, known as Messmaker. Messmaker. Okay, that uh, the first one is going to. Does rage only affect damage or does it affect hit as well? Damage only. Got it. Uh, that's going to be a seventh to hit for the first one. That will hit. Okay. Oh, Jesus. That's 12 on the dice. It's going to be 19 damage on the first one. Okay. And I'm going to take my second attack against the same one. Let's see. And that's going to be an 18 to hit. Yeah, that will hit. Okay. I'm gonna switch these dice, so I just rolled double sixes again. <laughs> there you go, that's more like it. Uh, it's going to be seven plus six, 13 damage. Okay, then subs. Um, first off, I would like to hide, go into stealth. And I rolled a 28 on my stealth roll. Okay. Um, then sneaking around, I'd like to throw one of my daggers uh, at the... Uh, that, that uh, Duke has been targeting. Okay. That is uh, natural 15 to 22 to hit. That will hit. Alright. And since our stealth is that sneak attack as well? Yep. Perfect. Uh, that's a total of 10 damage on that guy. Anything else? Then uh, as my bonus action, I will unsheath my dancing short sword and uh, have it speak the magic word and send it towards the combat. Okay. And that is your turn. And that is it. So the Etten's turn. They look at each other. Put your heads look at each other. Naughty little dwarf! We'll taste good in our stew! Let's 
swings his battle axe at you. AC 18. That's a nuke. Gonna hit, yes. Okay. That will be 15 points of damage. What kind of damage is it? Uh, slashing. It is halved. And then the seven, correct? Yep. And then <laughs> Morning Star hit AC 14. Misses. Oh, nasty dwarf. Nasty dwarf. Stick us with dagger. And then Drell. All right, um, I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark. Okay. And then I will attack with my Warhammer. Okay. Um, let's see. 18, 27. AC 27 will hit. Six. It wasn't a nat 20, was it? No, no, it wasn't. Okay. Six. Seven, eight, six, five, fourteen, thirteen. 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 Okay, back up top to Duke. I get an extra attack. Oh, okay. Do it. Okay. Swing away. Okay, so. 18. 18 will hit. Alright. Oh, only 9 this time. All right, back up top to Duke. And, uh... Uh, just a second. Just, uh... Should we wait for him, or should I...? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Duke's gonna go ahead and go, uh... We're gonna kick ass and eat good berries. I'm all out of good berries. <laughs> Be a natural 17. It's gonna be in the 25s. That'll hit. All right. We'll make good berries. We'll mix good berries in your stew. That is going to be. Fifteen damage right there. As you hit him, he drops down to one knee. Braces against the ground with his battle axe. The heads are about your level, and they're looking at you. Me, nasty dwarf. We just wanted you in our pot. And go ahead with your second attack. Okay. Natural twenty. Nice. Holy okay. Okay. Can I roll for the uh, the confirm of the sharpness? Yep. Oh God, oh God, no, it was a 17. <laughs> okay, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I want to go for the describe. best Describe how you would like to end the Etten. Okay, so what I would like to do, Messmaker gleaming with the sharp... Basically, Duke does a complete spin and comes down and chops off both heads in one swing. And his blood squirts, the body falls, the heads roll. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Char, this would be about time for the first break. I was going to say as he goes down, you got ahead of yourself, mate. Ha, <laughs> <laughs>
And that will be an inspiration. <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right. And then I think we will take our break. All right. Hope everybody out there is enjoying all the fun festivities that are going on. We are at break right now. We should only be gone for about 5-10 minutes. And when we get back, we will roll away to find out who wins the Rusty Dragon Bar. That's our first giveaway tonight. So if you want a chance at winning that, you've got yourself about 5 minutes to do exactly what Subsys Cyber did says there, you must be at least a follower, and unfortunately, you must be in the United States because I just sent out a a, a set of dice to a young man. Not really, caffeine stew is not young, but we, I just sent out a set of dice that cost me nine dollars. I sent it to him in Canada. It cost me ten dollars to send it over the border, which is literally since I live in Montana, a hundred and like fifty miles away from me. But it cost me more to ship it. So please, folks, has to be in the United States. I'm sorry. I know. Blame Donald Trump because he's the cause of all of our problems. So we will be back in about five minutes. And we will see you guys then. Please hang around. There's a second giveaway. The second giveaway you do not want to miss because it's pretty damn cool.
is all right welcome back to forged at the table my name is charles let me pull my beautiful wonderful so sexy face up on the screen there you go here i am once again let me remind you that no i am not your dungeon master tonight that is stumpomatic up, up there I don't know where he's at. He's over. He's above me someplace. So let's get this done. So what you're going for right now is this giveaway for the unpainted Rusty Dragon bar set. This is absolutely fantastic. It's made by WizKids. The detailing is super, super high. It comes pre-primed with Vallejo paints. And as a professional painter of small children's miniatures and cauldrons, I know a good primer when I see one. This is good stuff. If you want a chance to win it, go ahead. You've got yourself, let's see where we're at time-wise. you got yourself two minutes. Two minutes to enter the word stump in honor of our Dungeon Master tonight. And then we'll get this thing given away and we'll turn it back over to these guys and let them continue killing two-headed innocent creatures in the night. It seems like everybody on this channel is nothing but a bunch of murderous fiends. Alrighty, that's it. I'm giving it away. It's going bye-bye. Here we go. Who wins this? Did anybody even enter? Scraticus! But is Scraticus actually in the chat? Scraticus! You need to get a hold of me, my good man. I tell you what, Scraticus is a good guy. I've seen him around on some other streams. If Scraticus, nope, he's not here. I tell you what, I'm going to send Scraticus a message and let him know that he won. And then we'll get this shipped off to him once I get information back from him. So let me go ahead and shoot a message to him really quick and then I will go ahead you won the rusty dragon bar oh well, shit <laughs> message me back so I can give it to you states only please wasn't Scraticus playing a gnome today over on Encounter Roleplay? I think I saw him over there doing that kind of crazy, weird role-playing stuff. <laughs> stuff just creeps me out. So, okay, there we go. All right, so now, here's the, here's the next one. We're going to do another giveaway. Let me get this one up and running, if this stupid thing will let me do it. Okay, we're going to cancel that one out. All right, now let me go ahead and do this. This is all the boring, fun stuff that happens on the back side. So stick around. You can't leave anyways. Um, whether or not you realize it or not, when you came in, we did mine the exits, both on the left side, right side, back, and the two forward ones. So you can't get out of here. You're stuck here. The only person that can release you guys tonight is Stumpomatic. So here we go. Here we go. Let's see what we got here. Tonight's second magic word. And for this giveaway, you're going after a Displacer Beast. This is a bundled set, a Displacer Beast. These are all the WizKids pre-prime pre stuff. You've got the Displacer Beast. You've got the Phase Spider, all of Matt, all of Matt Mercer and Critical Role. You've got some, some wonderful tables and chairs, a two-wheeled cart. You've got yourself some pillars right there. You've got yourself uh, some mimics. Jesus, I got so much crap laying around me. You've got yourself a silver dragon, and most importantly, you have a chance to win this. Bubbles, the two that got away, right there for you. You get a chance to win that, and I'm tossing in this giant size d20 because i've got more than one which is kind of nice so you get a chance to win that there's a normal size d20 to let you see the difference i'll throw that one in there as well there you go the magic word that you got to enter one time by the end of the night enter that 
just one time. Remember, you must be a follower and you must be stateside. It's about $45 in that second bundle there just in case people want to see how much they're going to be winning. So be a follower or a subscriber. Subscribers do get extra luck. Only enter it once. Otherwise, the mighty night bot will, will put a foot in your ass and kick you on out of the competition. So go ahead and enter Bubbles, and you'll have a chance to win it. So as everybody knows, this is Forge at the Table. I am Charles. I'm your host tonight, but I am not your dungeon master. I'm going to turn it back over to these guys, let them get back to, to murdering anything that come across their path. People thought Bubbles was bad. I think Duke Dorgar has got something to prove because I don't think the dwarf can outdo her so here we go I'm gonna bounce out of here all righty stump it's back to you have fun welcome back everybody um and I promise I will give Duke the opportunity with lots of little children and little old ladies later in the evening so just finished killing this Etten who is out for a stroll looking for something to fill his belly. What would you like to do? Subs would like to uh, retrieve his daggers that he had thrown. I think Duke is not. Oh. I am muted, aren't I? There we go. <laughs> Duke's going to start wiping the gore out of his. And he kind of looks over the rest of the group. Going, that was fun. <laughs> and he just kind of stares silently at the rest of the party. Uh, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to take a look at the Adam's corpse. And... Um. Okay, you look through the Etten's corpse, and you find a collection of rabbit, raccoon, fox bones. Um, it's in a bag. It looks like they used it for play, you know, the various bones for toy soldiers and things, some kind of crude carvings. And... They have a pouch with, that contains all of their worldly treasures, four coppers and two silver pieces. You take the pouch and throws it over to subs. Here you go, little guy. <laughs> it's kind of funny, a dwarf calling you a happy little guy. <laughs> subs smiles, catches it, and uh, pockets all the coin. Thought about giving some to Drell, but, but he's, he's asleep. asleep. He's asleep. That's why I tossed it over to you. <laughs> I don't get up for anything less than one gold. <laughs> Both of you, as you look over to Drell as he is sleeping, give me a perception check. Both of us? Yep. Okay, a whopping. Subs got a 16. Oh, dude, got a 19. Okay, so you both see as a mist kind of settles in the early morning, the, in the figure or in the mist, you see what appears to be a large orc that is just standing over Drell, looking down at him and you see hatred and anger is just emanating palpably from this orc in the and he's just missed but he's just growling and glaring at grell as he sleeps uh sub so seeing a, an unknown enemy immediately grabs his dagger and flings it at the mist Okay, and as it goes through the mist, it, dis, 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 it the figure disperses, and it's as the mist comes back after the dagger flew through it, 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 it the figure's gone. 
A little bit of shock washes over Sub's face. Good Realizes shot, man. Killed it in one hit. Now turns to, to Duke. <laughs> well, you know how I, I roll. And, uh... I roll indeed. <laughs> and Subs will begrudgingly go and try and find his dagger. Yeah, if you're able to find it. Sticking out of the tree on the other side. <laughs> And the rest of your watch passes uneventfully. So does that mean that technically we completed a long rest? Yep. Yeah, I get my one user rage back. <laughs> All right. Um, guess uh, morning comes. We'll kick Drill awake. Come on, boy. There's there's coin to be had. <laughs> Do you say coin? It. So, uh, did you piss off some kind of orc creature? Just looks away, kind of uh, silently. His face gets a little pale. Oh. Uh, no. 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 Alright. Whatever. Just wanna know you got attacked last night, but whatever. Him, him over there. That little happen down there, he saved your life. Kill it in one blow. It's amazing. <laughs> I don't think you can kill that thing. I've tried. <laughs> he just kinda of exchanges a look with subs. Subs rolls his eyes and uh, packs up his bag and, and gets ready to move on. All right. Let's go. So you're traveling uneventfully. About noon, you notice that normal forest sounds, you know, those forest creatures, the sound of birds, it, they, they disappear, you know, at first, you don't notice it, but after a while, it's like, I haven't heard a bird chirping for some time. And a short time later, low mist hangs between the trees, in the grass. To the north, there's a thunderhead that's just sitting there, hanging in the sky, low in the sky. Um, just you start to feel like someone's watching you there's every now and then there'll be a crow just silently sitting in the trees watching as you make your way down the trail this is making subs very uncomfortable he'd like to see if he can see anything out there that might bring harm to the party i got a bad feeling about this ranger What's going on? It's a good question. Um, let's see if I can make a nature. I guess like a nature check. Yes, give me a nature check. Subs is perception check. It's a fifteen on perception. You got fourteen on nature. Okay, so for subs, you look around. You just other than the lack of wildlife, it, it's shouldn't the crew. But you know, like the storm, the thunderhead hanging there, it definitely could be late. You know, early fall in the mountains, a storm. A storm isn't something that is surprising at all. You just really don't see anything that would explain this sense of unease. Drell, you definitely, the crows, the silent crows that watch you, that's strange. You're, you're definitely feeling something is not quite right. And as you're looking around, thinking about it, you hear over your shoulder that familiar voice whisper, it's an evil place. And I will get my revenge soon. Uh, 
Yeah, something's definitely not right here. I, I can't really tell what it is, but we should be careful. Recalling the merchant tales, Duke is looking up in the tree, check for hanging entrails and random procedures. You are seeing none of that. No. Duke looks a little bit disappointed, honestly. A little crestfallen as they continue. The rest of the day passes uneventfully. Um, the number of crows in the trees slowly starts to build uh, in the off in the distance further east along this trail occasionally you'll see a large flock of a large murder of crows take to the sky for a short time and settle down and then the cacophony of cause makes its way you know you hear as this huge murder of crows moves about the forest. Eventually, the sun starts to set. What would you guys like to do? Uh, judging on where we're at and how long we've traveled, can we kind of make a guess of how close we are to Escrow? You are certain if everybody has been telling the truth drive at Grove sometime tomorrow afternoon yeah then I think we it's uh, best to make camp again and finish our journey in the morning I think that's a good idea all right let's find a good place a nature check Please. Probably from the ranger. <laughs> I got 20. Yeah, you find a very nice, uh, small valley off to the side that it's almost like a little box canyon. You'll be able to defend it easily. All right, uh, let's go over there. Up, so we'll trail behind. Okay, quickly set up camp, eat, gonna have a guard shift again. Duke's actually gonna make a nice gourmet meal for the party. Surprisingly, he's a very good chef. <laughs> okay, so you are treated well. I guess since Duke's staying, I've been cleaning the pots, so they for. Okay, so Duke will have All first right. watch. Who will have second watch? I'll take second. Subs for third. <laughs> okay, is the other two go to sleep and Duke is sitting up? Uh, <laughs> right <laughs> right before ahead. we go to sleep, uh, I want to cast alarm okay so to set up an alarm 20 feet around this I guess okay so as you're as they're falling asleep you do the hair on the back of your neck is just standing up you you are certain somebody is watching you and here there's the noises out in the, in the woods that aren't you'll hear a twig snap and nothing and then you swear you hear the murmur you hear slight murmurs nothing ever comes and the two of you sleeping is you fall into fitless sleep in your dreams are full of the hints of somebody coming over and watching and you 
hint of the shadow falls across your face, and there's a couple times you wake up certain when you look up you'll see somebody standing there there's nobody there Drell more than once a large orc warrior makes an appearance in your dreams and you are heading to doom an evil place and I will get my revenge and your watch passes with nothing solid appearing. You're muted again. Oh no, I'm just mouthing the word solid. <laughs> <laughs> like, corporeal. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so, is that just my shift? So, wake up the yeah. next guy. Okay. Okay. And it... It, all three shifts pass the same way. You're, you're not, but as you're what, you know, again, it's a constant feeling that somebody's watching, and then you'll see a shape in the mists, but then the wind will pick up a little bit and blow through the mists, and it just it gets blown away by the wind, just a shape of shape in the in the fog. So you wake up the next morning, not sure you got a long rest, but technically a long rest was had. <laughs> Shall we press on? I don't love this place, sooner we're out the better. Agreed. So we just set up. Okay. So it continues much the same about noon. The mist is starting to creep out of the forest onto the onto the road. Um, crows are thick now. They're just silently watching. And at some point in the morning, like 11.30, the flock around the crows that has been watching you, they just take into the air and caw and just and, and fly off. And you see in the distance, they settle down in the forest. <laughs> And then shortly after that, you start seeing hung in the trees, just, you know, it, it starts, there's a string of intestines here. And then a little bit later, you'll see a scalp hanging off a limb, reaching out onto the path and hanging from one of the twigs is somebody's scalp of hair. Short time later, somewhat, you know, just and as you move your move along more and more, it gets it's making a path along, you know, it's creating a tapestry alongside the path. Subs will turn to the party and uh, say, This looks like the place the old man at the inn was describing. Guess he wasn't lying after all. Talk about that guy is completely trustworthy. Everything he said was. But what's weird is giants normally don't leave leftover. What do you think it was? I don't know. Is there any kind of knowledge check I can make, me? Um. Something that may do this like as a ritual? Give me a general knowledge check, a general intelligence check. <laughs> this will turn out so well. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be a flat roll. A zero. 
That's going to be a 10, dead average. Okay, you are... If you had to guess, you would know that there's certain cults that worship old ones. Um, like some of the more primitive people thinking nomadic barbarian tribes may who worship primordials may do these types of uh, maybe like hag covens may have rituals like this or you can't think of like any of the main guys that would have any ritual or you and you're certain giants ogres any of the goblin kind wouldn't they wouldn't take the time i know who it was they are some sick bastards that's what they are yeah <laughs> I'm afraid of what we're going to find in town if this is like we better press on quick do you think it's smart or wise to, to press on quickly seems like we're kind of being funneled in if they want to gather one place for me it makes it easier for me <laughs> that's that's true we can definitely crush in schools let's just uh try to make it there as quick as possible best way to deal with the trap is to walk right into it. I agree. <laughs> True dwarven. Just get it done. So as you come over this next small hill, at the bottom you see two wagons. They're overturned, crossing the, crossing the road. And on the other side of the wagon, you see three ogres and they're kind of hunched down in the wagons and they're looking up the path towards where you guys are coming and from our viewpoint can they spot us i'm going to see right now as of right now it does not appear they have spotted you have we seen them yes so are they kind of like crouched on the other side of the overturned Yep, they're crouched on the far side of the wagons, looking over the wagons. Guys, guys, I got an idea. Does anybody have something that can make me stealthier? I can cast a uh, Pass Without Trace. Would you do that for me? Definitely. If you have a few gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Pull off two gold from my purse and toss it at him. <laughs> All right. Here you go, then. I'll cast a uh, Pass Without Trace. Okay. Is that, can that include more than one person? Yeah. It's up to certain Wait. number cards. I think it's an, an area effect, if I remember correctly. Let me make sure. I thought it was up to six or something like that. And your companions. Yeah. Okay. Just 30 feet within, yeah. Within 30 feet, okay. Yeah, we're good. Now, is it, is it a concentration spell, or is that just cast? Um, it's concentration. Okay, so you, you had to go with me. Yeah. Then. Okay. All right, guys, follow me. What I'd like to try to do is to sneak up to the side of the cart and just try to flip it up over on top of them. <laughs> okay. So, give me stealth checks. I think we get a plus yeah, from stealth. Or plus yeah, you get tracing. plus 10. Plus 10. Yeah. So, 16, 26. Thank God. <laughs> D. I don't have a very good stealth. Uh, 31. 22 for Duke. 27 for subs. Okay, so you are, you sneak about halfway down and you're, you're about halfway between the top of the hill and the wagon and 
the the forest runs out. They have cleared out around the wagon. So you are, say, we'll say 35 feet away from the wagon that you will have to cross open ground. Seeing how the two of us are very small, <laughs> can we hide behind like the figure of the wagon as we move? You can attempt. Uh, the stealth checks will be made at disadvantage. But you'll still have the plus 10 from the... But this I is... Uh, are you guys with me? Are you guys with me? Subs gives you a nice little wink and a smile and, and proceeds to move forward. Okay. At disadvantage. Yep. Uh, 33. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, I rolled even better this time. That's going to be 26 for stealth. Okay. So you guys both get right up beside the wagon, and you hear the ogres on the other side. Oh, no, the crow's caught. The crow's caught. They're going to be coming over that hill any minute, and I'm going to smash them. Smash them. Okay. Um, I'm gonna look back at my party and give them kind of like, and I'm gonna go into a rage and try to flip the card. Okay. Is are you gonna help as well? I'm subs will not. He's actually gonna activate his ring of jumping, do a flip over the cart, landing on the other side of the ogres, at the same time. and attempt a backstab. Okay. So I'm wait until I flip the cart first. <laughs> like as as the motions are happening. Okay. okay. Yep. Give me a strength check to flip the cart. I've decided on the DC. It's a when I say cart, I mean it's a heavy wagon. So okay. Well, <laughs> let's see if an angry dwarf can do it. Yep. All right. Because I got twenty strength. All right. I get an advantage because I am raging. First one's gonna be a five, natural five. Good, it's only ten. Second one is nineteen on the dice. So it's gonna be twenty-four to flip it. Okay. So you see the dwarf, he's just pumping up, you know, and you see him crying, you see him straining, and you hear the ogres, huh? What? Huh? Earthquake! And he slams the Wagon over. Give me a jump check to jump over. That'd be uh, acrobatics, or yeah, acrobatics. Uh, a ten. <laughs> okay, so you jump over. You land. You roll up, and as the wagon flipped over, it kind of pushed the ogres back. And two of them are, so you land between two of them, and in front of you, as the wagon fell over, he stumbled, and he fell to the ground. So, ah. he's not pinned beneath the wagon, but he is prone in front of you. So, go even, ahead. Even with the jump spell? You, yeah, you landed, Okay. But you're kind of between the two, and then... So there's an ogre here to the left of you, an ogre to the right of you, in front of you, laying on prone. Oh, okay. So I got left, right, prone. Yeah. Okay. And then can I make an attack? Yep. Make an attack. And Drell, if you want to do something, let me know after he makes his roll. All right. So I've got my uh, dancing short sword in one hand, my other short sword in the other. I'm going to do a slash attack and try and attack. Uh, basically chop at their, their Achilles tendons on the, the two ogres standing next to me. Okay, so one to the right and one to the left. Correct. And I will allow you to get sneak attack on both of them. Awesome. This first one is an 18 to hit. That will hit. Now it's to the right. The left one is also an 18 to hit. Okay, both hit. Awesome. First one is total of 16 damage to the one on the right. Okay, and just for everybody's 
That is num ogre number one. And then ogre number two, three, four, five, six. And a total of ten to the one on the left. Okay. So sixteen to ogre number one, ten to ogre number two, ogre number three is prone, but not injured. Drell. Um, let's see. I wanna pull up my longbow and okay. aim at the the prone. Okay. So you know, with ranged attacks, you will be at disadvantage attacking prone. Oh really? Yeah. Right. Melee, you get advantage. Right. Oh Melee, wow. Uh, advantage, but... Well, it's a smaller target to hit, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that makes sense. Well, I've already said it, so I'll just. <laughs> Thirteen. AC thirteen will hit. Oh yes. Nice. <laughs> yeah, they're slow. Yeah. And they really believe their stench is going to protect them from your sword. <laughs> See that works out for them. Uh, it's ten. Ten damage. Okay. And now initiative. Duke's gonna have a five. Took all his effort to flip that cart. He's gonna be slow down a little while. What is has a twenty-six. Uh, I got a twenty-two. Rolls have been reversed. <laughs> the student has become the master. <laughs> okay, so so you just flipped over. Attacked one on each side, and it is your turn. All right. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, stab ogre number one. That was the one to the right. Yep. And then after that, I'm going to disengage. So attack. This is a 17 to hit? Yep. And that's a total of five damage. Okay. Then my bonus action, I'll, I'll disengage. How far back are you moving? Um, I'm going to jump back. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go about 10 feet back. Okay. And Drell. Um, I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark on the prone guy. Okay. I guess that would be number three. After him. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to pull out my Warhammer and... And rush him. Okay. So you charge forward. And oh my god, uh, it's a it's a crit fail. Okay. <laughs> and you get to attack. Next one. That is a twenty-three. That will hit. Yeah. Fifteen. Okay. Then the ogres go. Well, ogre number one is going to chase after that nimble little halfling. Rolls a natural 20. Oof. Jesus. Oh, Can that be used on other people? I don't think so. Oh, darn. Yeah. This huge club smacks you in the side of the chest for 22 points of damage. <laughs> There's crunch. So he 
is on. Number two, we'll turn to the dwarf that just came walking in as well. Swing his great club and hit AC 17. I tie it, so I think it hits. Yep. For 14 points of damage. You said that was bludgeoning? Yep. Okay, then that's down to seven again. Yep. <gasps> Some of the dried blood from the chest hair cracks off. And number three will stand up and swing at Grell and hit AC 25. Nope, that misses. <laughs> Just joking. Okay. I was going to say, I'm not <laughs> That's a stout ranger. Um, 12 points of damage. Okay. And then it is Duke's turn. Oh. I'm going after the bastard that just hit me. Is that number two? Yep. Yeah. Go, who? No. No, you didn't. Nope. Might have to actually roll on the table, huh? That's going to be a 22 to hit. Got a little hit. Going to be 16 damage. Six. Hit him solidly in the gut. <gasps> He's still up. And I just pull it back out, swing around, and try to go for. That one's a 15 to hit. 15 will hit. One of these days, I'll the table again. Nine plus seven, so sixteen damage. He is. Uh, he falls to one knee, screams in pain, but he's he's still there. He is hurting and subs. Seeing my dwarven friend make one of these mighty beasts fall, I'll activate my ring of jumping again and uh, leap onto its back driving my blade into its spine. Okay. <laughs> uh, the attack is a 26 to hit. That will hit. All right. And total of 8 points of damage for the first hit. That's including sneak attack. Oh, no, not including sneak. Uh, nice first you want to use sneak attack. Yeah, that'd be great. An additional 11 points of damage on top of the 8, so 19 points of damage. Okay, so you land, drive the blade, you feel it slide in between two of the vertebrae, and Duke, this ogre thuds to the ground in front of you with the halfling riding its back to the ground. And so... <laughs> Subs will look Duke right in the eye, give him a wink and a smile, and a turn to face the other two ogres. Okay. And... Yeah, crazed rage look on him, so he probably didn't... Drell. <laughs> um, after taking that hit, Drell's a little angry, so uses uh, Slayer's Prey as a bonus action. Okay. And then... What does Slayer's Prey do? It's pretty much another Hunter's Mark. Okay. Did you do Hunter's Mark damage last? Yeah. Okay. So as you get ready to swing this time, guys, you see again that misty form of that orc warrior and his, his hand the form is, and it's like reaching out for the hammer as Drell swings, but his hand is into the hammer, and you see him like pulling back, trying to keep the hammer from swinging forward. And you hear this faint echo on the 
No. Don't hit. So you will have disadvantage as you come. All right. First one is. Uh, that's 13. And the next one is. Wow. 11. The 11 hits. Oh, wow. <laughs> These guys really do believe that stench is their armor. They've never been a dwarf like me. 15. So, 19. Okay, this ogre too is. You hit him, he drops to one knee, he's reaching down, pushing himself. With his hand, you can see he's about to get up. You have a you have a second attack, correct? Yes. Is this disadvantage too? No, this one is. It's no longer disadvantage. All right. Eighteen. Eighteen hits. And that is a fourteen damage. So you just come over the top of him as he's trying to get up and mash square in the back, driving him down, and blood is rolling out of the corner of his mouth. He just looks, and you can't believe, but then you see his, he sets his hands, and he starts pushing himself up again. Oh, my God. <laughs> it is the ogre's turn. So as he's pushing himself up and the number one who is just spinning around as the half on the jump, raise their heads to the sky, let out a bellow, just a and the crows, all the crows, and this huge, massive swarm raise up to the sky in a cacophony of caws thundering cacophony of cause, deafening, you hear, and out in the for out in the woods, you hear two more answering bellows of ogres and crashing as something is making its way towards them. The one that you just hit gets up to his knees, and from his knees he swings his great club and just tries to drive Drive it into your skull. But just weakly an AC 10 to hit. <laughs> <laughs> no. Is it? Kite bounces harmlessly off your chest armor. And the one that you jumped over just swings around like a baseball bat, trying to connect with this jumpy pain in the ass halfling. <laughs> AC. 12. 12 misses. And it just whiffs right over the top of your head. You feel the air. <clears throat> and Duke. All right. So which one is the one closest to me? Right on the other side of, of subs. All right. Swinging away at that one. Twenty-two to hit. Hit. It's going to be fifteen damage. Okay, you rock him back on his heel a little bit. Right. Take my second swing at the same one. That's going to be an eighteen to hit. You'll hit. Nine plus seven, so six. Sixteen. And with that one, you cut into his leg. He's bleeding, and he drops down to one knee, but he's staying up. And he's bracing himself with his club, and you see him preparing, gathering himself to swing again. And subs, unless you're doing anything else. I will do one more thing, just for fun. Okay. I'm going to go into Frenzied Rage. Okay. To use my bonus attack to bastard. 
Okay. I'm not done with you yet. And you see horror as realization in his eye. Yeah, it's gonna be 21 to hit. Go ahead. That's gonna be... I roll nine again. So that's gonna be another 16 damage. Okay, and you drive the horror from his eyes. Send his gray matter and head flying across the path. And subs, it is your turn. All right, so how far away am I from the Borkat's attack or the uh, ogre attacking drop? You are like five feet, ten feet. So I will move into striking range, slash at it with my uh, short sword. Okay. So as he's starting to push himself up off the ground, you come in. That's a 20 to hit. That will hit. And drive that last single hit point. And it's... Drill. Or, okay, so there's your one attack. What else would you like to do, subs? And the one that I just hit's now dead? Yes. I'd like to uh, use my bonus action to throw my dancing short sword into the air and have it begin to hover. Okay. And Drell. So as the three of them in front of you are dead, but you hear crashing through the woods a short distance off, two, one ogre from each side. The one being one on each side of the road coming crashing through the woods. I can hear this. I can't see it. Right. Okay. Um, are there any, like, bushes or anything nearby that I can hide in? Yes, there is just... This is a fairly dense forest. It could be pretty easy for you to hide. I'm gonna try and stealth then. Okay. Uh, natural 20. <laughs> okay. He is... Drell disappears. And just as he does, crashing out of the woods, Two more ogres, and they see their companions, and they just again bellow this bellow of rage, and come running up to you. But they will—they do not see you, Drells. They run right past you, and they are both running. One runs at subs, and one runs at Duke, but they have to double move to get their action. So it will be Duke's turn as an ogre comes running up to you. More things to kill. And I'm actually going to make a uh, reckless attack on this first one. Okay. So advantage, but then they get advantage against me. That's a natural 18. That's 18 is the higher roll. It's going to be a 6 to hit. Okay, they were both hit. Well, I mean, that was just the first one. Yeah. Eight. So 15 damage on the first attack. 15 to number four, okay. And then it's going to be 22 to hit on the second attack. That will hit. That one's going to be six, six. So 13 damage on that attack. Okay. And then I get my Frenzy's Rage bonus attack. attack. And that one's going to be. Plus, it's a little, but I still think that a 14 will hit. 14 will hit. That one's going to be better. That one's 17 damage. Okay, so it comes running up, screams at you, and you're, you know, it leans into you and screams, and you just smack, 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 three, and <laughs> bleeding and just lost an arm he's hurting <laughs> i scream right back in his face ah subs uh, i actually command my dancing short sword to lock at the uh the ogre that duke has just beaten to a pulp okay that's a 19 to hit that will hit that is nine points of damage to him. So, Duke, as you're screaming at, back at it over its shoulder, you see this short sword just come 
freaking in and stab into its back. It arches and screams. But it is still standing. And then for my good. bonus action, I'll, I'll use my second wind to okay. regain 1d10 plus level. Uh, I'll regain 12 points of health back. Okay. And that ends my turn. Okay, Drill. Alright, um, I think I'm gonna come out from behind and, uh, pick up the Warhammer once again okay. and try to smash it down on the one they've already attacked. Okay, you will have advantage on this first swing as they do not know you are there. Natural 20. <laughs> Describe how you just crush this ogre. Um, I kick it in the back of its kneecap, then bring the warhammer to straight down, just like Gallagher style. <laughs> like Gallagher, watermelon explodes, and the front row is sprayed. <laughs> Wipe some from your face. Ah. The, other, the other older that was screaming at subs is now looking around, going, but you still have your extra attack or your second attack. Yeah, right. 21. Good hit. Seventeen. Okay. <clears throat> he is going to return the swing. He rolls a critical failure. Just as the brains of his companion is kind of flying into his face. And he's wiping with his eye, wiping clear the gray matter from his eyes and fling wildly way over your head. And at the same time, about 20 feet, 30 feet, we'll say 40 feet down the road, you hear a whistling sound as you turn and an ogre with a very large lady's brassiere swinging <laughs> over his head. And releases a large stone at, I will say one or two is Drell, three or four is subs, five, six is Luke, two, so Drell releases a large stone that smashes into the wave of the side and an AC eight misses yes. and leaves a hole about the size of your head, clean through the wagon. Woo! <laughs> and Duke, your turn. All right. So uh, I'll say, get the far one, and then I'll start swinging away at the one right. Okay. Which is ogre number five. Yep. Okay. Okay, it's going to be. 16 to hit. That will hit. Okay, this is not such a good roll. It's going to be 13 damage. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this as a reckless attack. Like one reckless attack. 19. So let's see. So 19 being a 20 something, but I'm pretty sure that hits. Yep, that hits. Okay. So that's going to be uh, 12 damage. Okay. And then the last sling from the Reckless from the Fury is going to be a 20. That will hit. And that one is for 15. He is reeling backwards at this time. Flashes in his belly. He has one hand over his gut and his intestines. 
and subs. Right. How far away is the ogre that's got the uh, brazier? About 40 feet. No, I, what did I say? 45 feet. 45 feet? Okay. So I'm going to use... I'm going to trigger my ring of jumping and, and leap 30 feet towards that direction. Okay. I'm going to have my dancing short sword follow me. Um, then... Let's see, would that that be technically my movement? Yep. Okay. Then I will throw my dagger as my action. And then send my dancing short sword in to, to give me a little cut. Yep. Alright, the dagger uh, is a 13 to hit. That will hit. Okay. Dealing six points of damage. Okay. And then a 14 for my dancing short sword. That will hit. Dealing nine points of damage. Okay. And Drell. Um, you said he's about 40 feet away? Yeah. Um, I'll pull up the longbow again. Okay. It's 23 to hit. That will hit. Ten. And a uh, second attack. The 20 day. That will hit. And 10 again. Okay. So the ogre standing in front of Duke steadies himself. And you see the look of resignation in his eyes. He knows he's going to die. But he is going to do everything he can. <laughs> so he lets go of his guts, lets his guts fall out, grabs his brake club in two hands, tries to drive you straight into the earth. He gets advantage too. He gets uh, AC 25. Hits. Max damage, 16. Okay, so 8 damage to me. So it's actually 20, so you take 10. 10, okay. Okay. Just kind of shrug it off. <clears throat> the one with the sling will take a step back. And we'll send... Reloads the sling and sends a rock at... Subs. AC 14. 14 on this. Right. Yeah, this huge rock. It's about the size of your torso. <laughs> it's flying by you and digs a trench in the ground. And Duke. Duke is going to like take a little bit of blood and just lick it and then take a swing at him. Feed that rage even more. That is going to be. You know, he's going to do reckless just for fun. Okay. It's going to be 18 to hit. That'll hit. And that'll hit for 15 damage. And it, it's. It's over. I mean, he, he gave everything he had in his last swing. You felt the connection, and you see his eyes spark to life, thinking that he may have indeed gotten, taken you with him, and then he feels your blade in him, knows he failed, and dies disappointed. Dies a disappointment. You still have your movement in bonus action. Yes, I'm... Actually, hang on. Nah, that wouldn't be bonus actually the action. I was gonna pick the rock up and chuck it out. Uh, no, I just saw him dashing. Okay. I probably won't go straight for it. I'll deviate a little bit so I'm in a different direction than the other two. 
Okay. So I won't get the max distance, but I'll give him more targets he has to shoot at. Yep. And subs. All right, so he took a step backwards? Yep. Okay, about how far away am I from him? So you had made 30 feet, and he had been so 50. You're now like 20, 25 feet. Okay. Um, I'll run straight at him using all my movement, my, my nice 25 foot movement. <laughs> and uh, would I be able to slide underneath his legs and, and perhaps take a, a bonus action to hide? Give me a acrobatics check. It's a 16. Okay, so you slide beneath his legs, looking up at him as he's watching you go underneath. <laughs> right, and then I'd like to uh, swing my short sword and get him right in the Achilles tendon, and then send my dancing short sword towards his head. Okay, and then you will be a stealth check after all those attack rolls. All right. So first hit is a 21 to hit. That will hit. Dealing five points of damage. Okay. The second is a 15 to hit. That will hit. Dealing seven points of damage. Okay. And then as you slide under, you continue the slide into the bushes. The woods give me a stealth in the thicket. That is a uh, 26 for stealth. Okay. So, Drell, you see this ogre down at it's that you've been shooting at. Watch subs come running, and he watches him go through. And then he hit and hit, and he's looking, and he's curled up, and he's seeing him bleed. And you have a shot at his back as he's almost underneath looking around for this halfling that just disappeared. <laughs> All right, I'll take the shot. Say 23. That will hit. Four damage. Four damage. <laughs> Okay, it'll scream as it stands up. <laughs> and your second shot? That is a 16. That will hit. Nine. Nine. And Nine. <laughs> as he's screaming, your throat pierces through his neck, comes out the backside. Gurgles his blood as his scream fades and dies. He falls to the ground, and a quiet settles over as you look around and you talk things looking down at you. <laughs> In silence. And I will ask Charles how much longer... We want to end it here, maybe do a second shot, or do you guys want to keep playing? It is okay, so it's completely up to you guys. Do you want to go for another hour? I'm down. Yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah. Having a great time. Okay. <clears throat> so, the forest is quiet, still that very quiet, the crows in the trees, tapestry of guts, and five ogres, six ogres lay dead at your feet. Uh, Subs, so sorry, go ahead. No, you. Okay. Subs so would like to go up to the ogre that had the brassiere, and, uh, Lift it up the brazier, take a look at it. Is it worth anything? No, it is completely stretched out. All it, it's 
I'll turn to uh, to Duke. Think your mother would like this? I never knew my mother. Well, I knew her well. Um. <laughs> sure. I'm just gonna walk around. Realize and... that I'm a... Good. Comes out from his rage. So that in these fun. in these wagons is tipped over wagons is the remains of original wagons headed to Esgrove. But it's it's all been trashed, busted up. But you see, like, pieces of a hole, shattered plates, uh, you know, just normal stuff you'd find in a general store that's just been busted up. It's all junk. Any of the uh, copper that was being transported? No, the copper would have been transported back. Okay. All right. Well, I say we uh, see if we can find anything of worth value on these ugly creatures and perhaps find where they, they lived. Maybe we can find something to salvage for the escrow people. No, it's pretty obvious their camp was right here. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to, to look around, see if we can find anything of worth. Okay, give me a perception check. Yep. Everybody can do it if you want. Uh, Sub's got an 11 on his perception. You find... We'll say... You find a crate of picks, miners' picks, that hadn't been destroyed. It's going to be an 18 for me. Um... You will find a couple rolls of cloth that, you know, yeah, you'll, they'll probably have to unroll it a couple times to get through the grime, but most of it seems to be good. I'm just going to kind of like unfurl it and then start kind of adjust and then toss it after I'm done. And drill. I got a nat one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he finds a cloth I throw to the ground. <laughs> there's there's just not much left in these wagons. Just too busy thinking about that gold. That reward. Maybe we should head back. <laughs> head back. Yeah, I think we should we continue to see town yet. Exactly. I'm pretty Maybe sure it's the, that's these, these giants that did it, right? Mm. Like I said, they don't normally leave left over. Give me a nature check, girl. All right. 17. You know that ogres, it is not uncommon for ogres to fall prey, prey to a number of powerful beings because of the ogre's incredibly low intelligence. They are favored, favored hen henchmen for quite a few supernatural type, powerful evil entities. Can I check some of their, their corpses, I guess? See if there's okay. any markings. Yeah. What would that be? Give me an investigation check. All right. That's 14. <laughs> <clears throat> you find on one of them a tanned skin and it looked like he had been finger painting, and he did a picture. It's of a woman, and the ogre is standing, and he drew a picture. The ogre 
assumably him, standing next to this woman. And this woman is bigger than he is, and its back is covered with like a hill, and there's trees and crags growing off of the back woman. I'm going to point the, point out the picture to everyone else and ask them if it means anything to them. Um, does the woman have hair in the picture? Yeah. What color is it? Uh, it looks to be green. Okay. Thinking if she had fire red hair, maybe it was our giant back, but it doesn't really make any sense if she was trashing her own wagons, right? Well, in this picture, I assume it's pretty proportionate. And right. she was like a half leg or something. Um, bigger than. Oh, sorry. Give me a history insight or, or I'm sorry, a history nature or religion. Ever is higher. All three of you can make it. All those are in checks, right? Yeah, I'm sure. I think my highest is history because I have a history. Uh, so it's got a 15 insight. Insight wasn't one of them. It was oh, history, sorry. nature, or religion. Okay, I'll go and be wrong. Uh, 14 on nature. I got 17 on nature. Which is 18 on history. Um, you guys all know that in some stories there's a hag that is known to have that hunchback with stuff growing out of it and it's a large hag do we know where she uh, normally hangs out um near small villages so this girl might be just the perfect place Well, one ugly. <laughs> so, subs turns to the group. I feel that we've uh, accomplished what we need to here. Um, might not be a bad idea to check in on the people of Escrow, see if we can lend a hand there, and also collect our reward. So, what do you guys say? On to Escrow then. I'm all in for collecting a reward, so wherever we gotta go. I don't like the thought of this hag on the loose. You know what she does with children and cauldron? You should go check in on the town, I agree. Okay. So, short time later. Ahead of you, down a hill, see small village laid out before you. Again, the mist is still covering the forest. It's now a thick pea soup fog that just fills the forest. And the woods around the clearing that the town is built in, there's in the trees is this continued tapestry of guts and pieces and uh, gore. The town itself is gray and drab. 
hanging over it is the storm cloud that it's you've seen in front of you for some time and it's releasing just a constant steady it's not a heavy rain but just a constant uh sprinkle you know a, a constant heavy mist on the town and the roads are you know all the streets are thick soupy mud very few people are moving about their shoulders are slumped into feet they're walking slowly trudging to their destination um in the center of town there is a human man he is holding he, he's dressed in black he has a priest collar and he is shouting citizens we must repent obviously we have done something to anger the God. our time draws near if we do not beg for forgiveness please let's all gather in the town's folk are just generally ignoring him there's one or two that's yes yes anything we should try friends we should try we shouldn't give up for dead as you are making your way into town subs will turn to the rest of the group seems like a very lively bunch here doesn't it You and I have very different definitions of life. There's gotta be some kind of piss water to drink in this town. That's how we find the tavern. Yes, I agree. Okay. You will make your way to the tavern. Um, a couple people notice you and you see them like, look and you see hope kind of come into their eyes and then they go running towards the center of town as you make your way into the tavern and standing behind the bar he's somebody's just cleaning a glass a human an older human he has black robes red socks the robe is kind of tore at the knee and when you look up balding man you will say oh visitors visitors please Azrael, we have visitors please sit down i am gargamel can i get you something to drink yes <laughs> long hesitation the gets glasses of ale. It's on, it's on the house. You came from Wheatfield? That we did. None of but we, everybody we've tried to send out, they never make it. And then the following day when we wake up, there's more decorations on the trees. We've we figured something was blocking us. Well, Did we didn't notice problem? anything come again. We had a very lovely stroll through those beautiful woods. Oh, well, maybe whatever. Maybe, and he shouts, uh, Corin, Corin, come out. We have, get some bowls of dinner from the kitchen. And a female... Uh, Dragonborn will step out of this, step down the steps and see him. Wait, you're not villagers. You're, you've come from out of town? Oh, that is good news. And I, yes, I will get you a bowl of stew. It's good stew. I'd like to try to go back to the kitchen that I am. See if it's actually good stew. <laughs> yes, it's. you follow her back and there's over the fire is a pot bubbling and you, this aroma of the stew hits you as soon as you walk in and it smells wonderful. Can I tell what kind of meat is in there? 
Uh, she says it's lamb. Lamb. Mm. Mm. That sounds really good. Gargamel is a very good cook. <laughs> good. good. And then I'm going to sit down and see if we can get information what's happening. Okay, so as you're sitting there, there's a crowd forming outside. You hear you know, the, the murmur of a crowd outside. You know, what are they doing? Is it really? They're not from town? And then shortly, you hear a smack. <clears throat> out of my way! Out of my way! I will see them. I will talk to them. I will tell you. <clears throat> you guys would get this excited about work, maybe. And a short gnome or a gnome comes stepping through the door, high rim spectacles on his nose. He like, ah, yes, the visitors. So did did Lady Giant Lady Giant back sent you? Who? We're, we're just traveling through, mate. I didn't know what you're talking about. Why? Well, we've... The entire town has been cut off from the outside world for... three, four months. By what? We don't know. Anybody we've sent out, because... we the following day, we see their remains on the tree. I'm sure you've noticed it as you walk... If it keeps happening, why do you keep on sending people out? Well, we stopped. Good. Good. Yeah, well, that's, we wondered what that was. We thought it was like you know, animal pots, you know? It was you. I wish it was animal parts. Um, no, the, the only trouble that we came across were a, a group of about six or so ogres. A lively, wonderful bunch. They invited us to dinner. Ogres, you say. <laughs> you said this happened about, what, three, four months back? Yes. Did you we... get anybody unusual in town at that time? No. Um... No, there hasn't been... You can't think of anybody who came in around time and has been trapped ever since here? No, there's just the only people who are here in town and the hunters who work for the mining company. To, and then there's Gargamel here and and uh, oh, what's her name? I just said it. Corin, his barmaid. Um, other than that, there's Nana Darkwood. She's the widow of a trapper who used to live outside of town. She's She watches the kids for the miners during work. But she moved into town, or she, probably six, seven months ago. Did she now? So what, what do you think would be doing? Then? Well, if you said there was ogres blocking the trail, a group of six ogres, I mean, the, we sent our, our town marshal went out to see what the problem was. And he was pretty handy with the sword, but I imagine even he would have six six overs single-handedly. Ah, uh, that ain't that bad. <laughs> Dude just gonna get back to his food. <laughs> Subs will uh, talk to the gnome. Well, we can assure you that those ogres will be of no more issue to you or your town. Okay, thank you. We're able to talk with them. That is good. I am glad you discussed and set things right. Very right, as I brush off a little bit of blood. 
hopefully this cursed storm will pass now and we can get back to to life did that storm start start about the same time oh yes i would think it was something unnatural and as you say if it was just the ogres well no if it was just the ogres then why would the ogres into time and death that makes no sense no no it doesn't hmm where 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 did you say this widow lived again um just right outside of town to the west she's her cabin set back in the woods a little bit all right well we'll we'll do a little scout around town make sure we didn't miss any of those ogres Oh, we would appreciate it greatly. I will, uh, I will send a rider to, to our employer, Giant Back, and see if I can't, uh, provide a, a reward for you guys taking care of our problem for us. Yeah, that, that would be much appreciated. And so he turns around and walks out and. Kipper, are you there? Come, I'm gonna get one of the horses and ride as fast as you can. Deliver this note to Lady Giant, Giant Back. A short time later, you hear a horse peel out of town. Uh, are we kind of alone within the group here? Yeah, there's still it's, the gnome came in, it, and there's a, quite a few people standing up just looking at you with hero worship, somebody outside of town, somebody new, but they're giving you your space and we should uh, probably go check that widow out. I agree. Imagine female character alone with a bunch of children. In this day and age, who knows what would happen? I don't know. I have nightmares still, you know. Uh, Totals. West of town, is what he said? Yeah, west of town. Yeah. Do you guys have any better ideas? Um, I, I say we uh, take a, a short rest here to, uh, you know... That's fair. Get some chow. Yeah. Definitely regain our strength after that little bout we had with the ogres. Okay. Oh, I guess we'll take a short rest, then I think it's the consensus, and I'm going to use a I think I'm D12s. As you are sitting there eating, rolling your dice and rest, you can't help but notice out the window you see the group a group of what looks to be town's children, and they're whispering back and forth to each other. Yet you malice and hate in their eyes. Wait, the kids have hate in their eyes? Yep. Oof, I don't like angry children. What are you looking at? And they start and run away. Bloody kids. I always think they're so superior because they get older. I guess we finish it. Now, did they run off in the western direction? Yes. Guys. I don't like the way this is turning out. Yeah, kids oh, freaking me out. Lag. We might want to bring a uh, cauldron of boiling oil with us. No. <laughs> that would be a little bit hard to carry. I mean, I look that far with that size of thing i mean i don't know about that true true all right are, are you all rested up you ready to go yes i'm ready on the road 
All right. Let's go. Okay. And as you walk, you, it's, the town is very small, past uh, four or five uh, small homes in town. And you get to the edge, and the children are to, you see a path heading into the woods, and you see smoke rising from what you assume another cabin just just down the path and the children are to either side of the path and they're chanting Nana Darkwood Rhine you up Nana Darkwood Grind your bones Pull your guts There's something weird going on, or I just hate being right. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> I thought it was rather catchy. Yeah. Um, something tells me we should get the children out of here somewhere. So incapacitate them, if you will. Uh, the only way I know how to do that would be to hurt them, and I don't feel like hurting children today. Oh, come on, you're shatting the psychopath. <laughs> Sometimes right, you gotta fine, be the go. kid. They, st- they stab me in the back. I am blaming you. <laughs> Fair enough. Christ. Okay. So, you go a short ways down the path, and you see the cabin in front of you, and a frail old frail looking old woman bent over using a walking stick looks up says oh company how are you boys not bad how about yourself hungry (laughs) she grows and grows to about 12 foot high and she's crunched over in green hair and on her back is, I mean, it's almost a turtle shell of rocks. I want to fry some children. Oh. And initiative. We're we can't have that now. <laughs> is that a 20 for subs? Okay, subs got a 20. And Grell. It's got a six. <laughs> the curse continues. And Duke. Duke is sitting at an 18. Okay. Nana Darkwood goes first. Ooh. I rolled a natural 20. Nice. Anybody ever tell you your ugly shit? So who's in front? Kind of figured we kind of walked up as a line. Okay. Well, she will run up, and it's just two steps for her. covers the distance. And she reaches out. And she will reach towards Duke. And their first claw, AC-19 hits. And her second claw, AC-23 hits. And she pulls and she starts to rend. He's going to bite as well. Damn it. AC-14. Misses. Okay. So each hit. Okay, so it's so like two claw attacks against him. Yep, and she pulls you in to a crushing. So the first claw, I'm just going to do the average. Damage. 
or do you want me to roll it? Whatever you want to do. Well, okay, two, six, eight plus five is 13 points for the first claw. Okay. One, one, eight plus five is 13 for the second claw. Okay. And then her crushing hug as she brings you in does 96. Oof. Oof. So I'm just going to do the average for that one. 36 points bludgeoning damage as she brings you in tight and crushes you. That one hurt. And subs, it is your turn. <laughs> All right. I'm going to activate my ring of jumping and leap up onto her back and just start stabbing as many times as I can into the back of her neck. Okay. So give me an acrobatics for the jump. Is a 21. Okay. You spring in the air, pirouette, do a flip, land on her back. There is like antlers and limbs growing out of her back that you can grab onto and support yourself. Right. I'm going to make two attacks just right at the base of her neck. First one is a 18 to hit. Okay, that will hit. And second is a 25 to hit. That will hit. All right. Doing a total of 17 points of damage for the both of them combined. And are those both piercing damage? Mm-hmm. And how much total? Uh, that was a total of 17 points of damage. You notice she appears to be, your, your damage is not doing it typically would expect. You are damaging her, but... And Drell. No, I'm sorry. Duke, you are next. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go into... And what she just did to me. Okay. How dare she hit the great Duke. <laughs> and he do his first swing. That one's going to be a... 20... Three to hit. That will hit. Sixteen damage there. Okay. And again, is this is slicing, slashing. Slashing, a slashing magical damage. Okay. And the second attack is higher. It's going to be a twenty-six to hit. Okay. Yep. That was going to be 17 damage. Last one. Okay. Natural 20. Nice. Okay. Okay. Somebody give me some luck. Somebody give me some luck. Actually, do I have inspiration too? From earlier? Yes, you do. I'm going to use that. Come on. It happened. <laughs> Double nat 20s? Double nat 20! Okay, so hang on. Let me... Sorry, I just got to read the sword. Never use this one. It's a sword of sharpness, right? Yes. So I think it severs a limb, but it also extra damage when it crits. There it is. Active items. So it does an extra 14 damage and it lops off one of the target's limb to be determined by the GM. Okay, so you will cut off her arm. And it's going to be 14 damage plus 14, so 20 damage plus whatever gets lopped. Okay. Nice. I'm so right. excited about that. 
I Jeez. made a high next round, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> she screams in pain as an arm green thick blood drips from her stub. You shall pay. You shall pay, dwarf. And Drell. Um let's see. Take careful aim and hunter's marker. Okay. Cast that. And then let's see. Um go with the warhammer, I guess. Okay, so here again as you try to swing that orc and you hear him clearly in your mind. Well, she shall be the end of you. You will not hit you are going to fail. Fail amazingly so. You may have defeated me, but you die here. Thirteen. Thirteen will miss. Second attack. And this one is not a disadvantage. Twenty-seven. That will hit. Oh my god. Uh, Ten. Okay, she is going to bite down on the dwarf. This, this, this. Let's see, AC 19. Hits. Six. That's five, 16 points of damage. Okay, and uh, what kind of damage is that? Uh, a bite is piercing. Okay, at least I have that. So that would be, you said it was 16? Yep. So eight. And then she is going to claw at Drell. AC 7 plus 8 is 15. AC 15 to hit Drell. Oh no, 16, sorry. Okay. It is up to the top. Subs. All right. So seeing that my swords aren't doing nearly as much as I want them to, I'm going to reach into my backpack, pull out a flask of oil, and smash it on the hag's back. Okay. And then I'm going to burn my axe and action surge to spark my swords together and try attempt to ignite the oil on her back. Okay. Um, give me a check. Just roll a d20. <laughs> Come on, baby. That is a 18. Oof. The <laughs> fire spreads through the brush and the woods on her back. Uh, roll me 2d6. Total of 10. As she screams and her arms, her arm goes up and tries to beat her back, <laughs> beat her back and eat this. And it is Duke's turn as she is basically ignoring you. She's hobbled. Her knee has been crushed by a war hammer. Oh, uh, with my action search, I would like to use my movement to leap off of her back. Okay. I'm going to use one of the healing potions that was graciously given to us. They were superior, right? Yep. I am going to use my action to pop one of those. Okay. Uh, does somebody have a digital dice roller? I don't want to roll a d4 eight times. Well, I guess I need to, don't I? Just a second, I can get one. I got, I got one here. I was wondering if somebody had a... Alright, let's see here. So... One. Three, five. Nine. 
9. Nineteen plus eight. Not bad. Twenty-seven points healed. Nice. It's not bad at all. And then I'm going to use my bonus to take one slash at her. Okay. All right. That's going to be a twenty-one to hit. That will hit. That one's going to be fifteen damage. And as she's reaching back, you cut through her exposed abdomen, and she crumples to the ground, screaming as the fire consumes her. And as she dies, you hear the children walking up, and the look in their eyes of horror and where, what, who, what happened? And the storm breaks, the sun shines through, and you three are the hero. I make sure we cut off the hags, had to take it back. <laughs> yes. You are each rewarded with, she doubles the amount she was planning on paying you, so you each get 700 gold. Ooh. Statues are built in town. We did it. <laughs> and guys, 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 we didn't kill any children. Yes. Yes. It can oh be my. done. It can be done. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! Oh, and everybody, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I did, especially the part where I got down to 7 HP. <laughs> yeah. I, at first, I was just going to go ham and only attack after disarming her. <laughs> I decided to try to get... Oh, God. Yeah. Sure, there sure. you go. Like, I, have a, I had a healing spell, so just in case you went down, I was just going to bring oh. you back up. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. No, but that was fun. I like that. Great job, nice. Stumps. Great job. Yes, I hope, like that. I hope I have performed well enough that I shall indeed be soon running the... There he is. I'll think about it. I see a creepy face right there now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Stumps. That was enjoyable. You did a fantastic job, as did the three players that actually managed to make the game tonight. I appreciate everybody coming around. I'd like to ask folks to hang around just for a couple more minutes because we still have a giveaway to do. We have a couple more announcements to do and a few other things such as that. For those who do not know who I am, I am Charles. This is Forged at the Table. I am your host. And thankfully for one night, finally, I am not your dungeon master. I got the night off. So that was, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for that there, Stump. Um, we're going to start with Stump to see if he has any final words or anything like that. Then we'll swing it around the horn to each one of the players, see if they have anything that they want to say. And then I'll get down to the fun announcements, and then we'll do the drawing. And then maybe we'll go raid somebody. I don't know. So go ahead, Stump. Again, I had a blast. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, I am looking forward to DMing the Curse of Strahd campaign in a couple weeks. Uh, that's about everything I've got. To the player of Drill. Oh, um, well, I had a lot of fun. Um, I learned some stuff I didn't know. Like the, <laughs> yeah, long range with the, uh, the prone. prone. Yeah. Uh, just want to thank you guys for letting me join in. All right, I'm glad player. you joined. Player of subs. No, I really, really enjoyed it. Well done, Stumps. I mean, this is your first DMing experience, right? No, it's my first online. Awesome. I've been DMing for years. Wonderful. Really, really enjoyed it. Fantastic storytelling. Thank you for letting me set her on fire. Really enjoyed that. <laughs> um, I'll actually be joining your Curse of Strahd campaign, and so 
look forward to playing with you there. So looking yeah. forward to it. Jersh. It was a very fun campaign. I loved it. Uh, you viewers definitely create a very overpowered character in Duke. <laughs> that 20 strength, 20 con definitely saved him. Wow. Uh, but yeah, it was great. It was a wonderful DM experience. Especially like flipping over that card. But thanks, guys. It was wonderful. So, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, a couple of announcements to make. Tune in tomorrow night at either, I think it's 9 p.m. Eastern time. You'd think I'd know because I'm the guy that's doing it. But tune in tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern time for DM's Designs, where I will sit there, bore the hell out of you with regaled stories of nothingness. No, actually, tomorrow night is all about map making, about the world of Aethelm, those people that are going to be in the Rumble in Relin game, the campaign. Uh, tomorrow night, I'll be going over some bit of, of Relin. We'll be talking about some different programs and a bunch of other stuff, so I encourage you to tune in for that. It's this Saturday night at 7 p. Oh, no, sorry, 9 p.m. Eastern again. I run this channel. I should know this stuff. Um, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern on Saturday. Tune in for episode eight of The Long Road. Um, and then the rest of our schedule is down below. There is more stuff that will pop up if you wait for the off screen. We have a giveaway to do. Again, I want to thank Stumpomatic for a fantastic job tonight. If you guys tune in on April 19th, you'll get a chance to watch Stump kick the tires and set the Curse of Strahd campaign rolling. I have a special announcement about that campaign. I have to remove one player from that campaign because they will be needing to take a break and I cannot do that because it will disrupt the game severely. Um, so a Zane Goose, if you're out there, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to pull you off unless you can figure something else out. Um, but on the flip side of that, there is already a new player that's going to be stepping in um, on that game. And I'll give you one guess as to who that's going to be. Ah, all right. That, that was enough. I am actually stepping in as a player into that final position on Stump's Curse of Strahd game. Damn it. I never get to play. I'm going to play in this one. I am going to be doing a gnome of some kind. So you'll beginning to get to see a little bit of my voices. So we're going to play that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Saturday, April 7th, the hype is real. They are coming back. A walk beyond the campaign that I'm running for five of the fantastic moderators over at D&D Beyond. That is coming back to the channel for episode two. That will be 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. If you live in between those time zones, do the math. If you live outside of the United States, do the calculus um, because our time zones are weird here. Um, but that'll be happening. There's a whole ton of stuff. And again, if anybody out there wants to run games on this channel, you don't need to know OBS. I will do all the background fun stuff. All you need to do is show up and want to run a game. If you want to play in any games here on the channel, there's a ton of stuff coming up. There is Star Wars coming up. There's Call of Cthulhu coming up. There are more D&D &D games coming up. I have got two more Dungeon Masters that are coming on board. As a matter of fact, from what I understand from talking to one of them, those two this summer are going to possibly be running a campaign where they're going to be co-DMing the campaign. So that should prove to be hella exciting. I have another DM that's coming on board. We have spots. We need players. All you have to do is drop a follow on this channel. That's simple. And get involved on our Discord. That information's down below. I even bet that one of my moderators could go ahead and probably post that Discord link in our chat here to make it even easier for you guys to do it. Forge at the Table, we're here to build a community of gamers and have a lot of fun. Stump there um, answered the call. Um, I put out the call for, for a Dungeon Master. Stump bravely stepped forward. This was his first time streaming as a DM. And if you think it's easy, then send me a message because I'd like to prove to you that it isn't all that easy. 
even with him not having to run the background part, it's nerve wracking. I still get nervous and I've been doing this for a couple. No, I actually haven't been doing it. I've been doing this for seven weeks. Um, so that's that. I think that we need to do a giveaway here, but I'm going to show off one more time the cool things that we're giving away on this channel. And also, we don't do giveaways to go ahead and, and get followers. We do giveaways here to help spread the wealth. These things are paid for by donations, bits, subscription money, and all that sort of stuff. We turn the money back around and we give it back to you guys. So what we're going for tonight is a phase spider. This is a whiz kids. These are unpainted pre-primed with Vallejo paint paints. There is a displacer beast. There is a table and stool set. I know everybody wants to see it. We're going to get to it. There are the pillars. There are, what the hell else am I giving away here? We got a two wheel cart. I've got way too much. Oh, I got more stuff over here even. Okay, we have two pack of Mimics. If you all watched a couple weeks ago for Adventure Weekly, Killer Ash, the half-orc bard, met his demise at the hands of that. We have the Silver Dragon right there. And the Pista de Resistance. Actually, not the Pista de Resistance. We have this giant. Just check this thing out, man. This is a huge D20. That's going in this bundle. And finally, the one thing that everybody wants, especially that murderous, lecherous turtle named Bubbles. You get your own two-pack of children. These, yes, these are the children that escaped her murderous wrath a couple weeks ago. These ones got away. Speaking of Bubbles, Bubbles has got a bit of fame here on the channel. As it sits right now, I'm waiting to hear back from Happy. But we are going to be on April 4th at 9 p.m. Eastern hosting Session Zero of Adventures with Bubbles. we got a bunch of players that are jumping in that. We're going to try and get Happy to bring over Hashar, the Slowwood Assassin. Because we can get those two turtles in the same party, we already start. With a body count of 139 deaths. Yes. Insane. So there's that. Go ahead. Make sure if you enter in the word bubbles, you only do it once because Nightbot's a jerk. You have to be in the States and you have to be a follower. It's that simple. Before I get to that, I want to do some shout outs to Scraticus for the follow during the stream. Quest for 1 million for the Prime subscription. Subsist Cyber for the resub of two months on the tier one. For Jens for the 300 bits that somehow I missed. Somebody sometime for the follow. Clizzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
That is simple. Follow here, Discord channel. That simple. I'm always announcing stuff. That's how these guys got into this game. That's how people are getting into games left and right on this channel. I shit you not. If you want to play games, this is the place to be. Again, thank you to the three players. You guys did a magnificent job. And very big thanks to Stumpomatic for stepping forward and, and running this. Again, He's going to be doing Curse of Strahd. Um, I'm going to be in that game. I'm going to cause some havoc. I want to meet this mighty vampire and kick him in the jiblies. So we're going to have some fun with that. So again, this has been well, This has been <laughs> Forced at the Table. I'm your host, Charles. And hey, let's play some games. Peace.